My name is Bonita Craft Grant, and I am the archivist for the Hopewell Museum. Uh, I took on this role in the spring of 2018, and our goal is to try to organize and make accessible all of the materials, uh, printed materials, photographs, books, genealogies, Bible and family records that have been in the museum. Uh, we started collecting roughly 1922, uh, when the museum formally came into being. Today I'm going to be talking about the mystery of John Hart. John Hart was a mysterious character, and he, of course, was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. He lived on what is today Hart Avenue in Hopewell. But his history is almost unknown. As a former librarian, I have selected two of the resources, two commercial publications from our collection that do describe John Hart in some detail. So we're going to just go down the line and discuss some of the mysteries and uh, try to resolve whatever we can. The first book that I found, and it has been here in the collection, uh, it's John Hart, Biography of the Signer of the Declaration of Independence. And we even have a brochure for the publication that was uh, done in 1977. Cleon E. Hammond was the author. He was also an uh, occupant of John Hart's homestead. And he and his wife bought the property in either 1953 or 1955. I have not done a deed search, but we could certainly find that out. Uh, and in fact, uh, the Biography, as of yesterday, online, there was one copy available, and the price was $944.47. So if you are interested in looking at this exhaustive survey of John Hart, his descendants, everything about him, I suggest you try to borrow a copy from your local library. Uh, Hammond himself was a retired Marine Corps colonel, and he also worked for Ethicon, a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson, retired from Ethicon in 1970. And the research for his book consumed some 25 years. So they sold the house, and they moved to Morris County, to Schoolies Mountain, where he completed the research on the book. And as I said, it was finally published in 1977. The other book that I found very useful and helpful, uh, Descendants of the Signers of the Declaration of Independence. This was published by Reverend Frederick Wallace Pine, P-Y-N-E, and that the edition we have is the 2009 edition. And Pine had uh, some very quotable quotes about John Hart. He said, of course, he was the least known of the five signers from New Jersey. And he said, there is a lamentable scarcity of surviving material on John Hart. He said his spelling left something to be desired. There has been some consternation about whether Hart could read and write, and in fact, he could read and write, and we have some signatures to prove it. And Pine also said, and Pine knows about the descendants of the signers, that John Hart's descendants were the most prolific of all. 
And the first issue that caused some consternation was his birthplace. According to Pine, descendants of the signers, John may have been born in Stonington, Connecticut. And I should add that the descendants of the signers have been very active in sharing information with the Hopewell Museum in sending us copies of newspaper articles from the past on the signers, on John Hart. Um, and so with one of the descendants, I did some research and looked at the Stonington, Connecticut town records, which are complete and online, found nothing. And the suspicion is, and Reverend Pine confirmed this, that John was probably born in Hopewell Township. His father, Edward, had a home on Rogers Road. And the suspicion is that John was born on Rogers Road. Birth date, of course, is unknown. There is speculation that it was perhaps November 5th, 1711. Uh, we do know that he was baptized in Hopewell Township, Old Hopewell Township, and the date was either 1713 or March 4th, 1714. Uh, the Gregorian calendar was adopted in 1751 by Britain, and so that is why there is a discrepancy in the dates but his baptism was recorded. Now, the other issue that has never been resolved, was he a Presbyterian or was he a congregant of the old school Baptist church? He married Deborah Scudder and Deborah's family and Deborah uh, were Presbyterians. But the fact that John donated land in 1747 for the old school Baptist church and cemetery, led people to believe that he might have been a member of old school Baptist church. But there is nothing in the record, uh, either through Cleon Hammond or Reverend Pine, to indicate that he was a congregant of either the Presbyterian or Old School Baptist Church. And in fact, when he and di he died and Deborah died, Deborah died uh, at the age of 55 in 1776, and John died on May 11, 1779. They were both buried in the Hunt Family Burial Ground, which is uh, roughly the intersection of Woodsville and Harborton Road, uh, maybe three or four miles west of Hopewell Borough. But this, uh, John was uh, moved to Old School Baptist Church and a monument was erected, but we'll go into that a little later. We'll try to go chronologically if we can. So we have here what is a lock of John's hair. And the, the story on this is told very thoroughly in Cleon Hammond's book. Hart's remains were exhumed from the Hunt burial ground on June 6th, 1865. On July 4th of 1865, he was reinterred in the old school Baptist church and a monument was erected. Now, the attribution, his hair allegedly is a reddish hue. And that was attributed to the soil because he had been in the soil for 86 years. So although his hair is supposed to be dark and he had a dark complexion, uh, that the hair does not does not tell us that. And some records did say that there was a lock of hair in the Hopewell Museum. I was unable to find it, but one of the descendants said to me, well, it has to be there somewhere. 
So I searched and searched, and here it was in its little vial. But Cleon Hammond said his hair was very dark. And we have here an image of John Hart. There are no surviving images of Hart during his time or from his descendants. Uh, this is a generally mythical description of what he might have looked like, but we don't, we don't have any proof. Hammond has no proof, and others also have no idea. Uh, this is a copy of his signature on a six-shilling note. We have that here, and in fact, we have his signature on another colonial six-shilling note. This was issued by the Colony of New Jersey. This one is number 15850. It's dated March 25th, 1776, with Hart's signature. And this was presented to the Hopewell Museum in 1954 by Albert Merlin, M-I-R-L-I-N, in memory of his late wife. And we also have John Hart's signature on a 1766 deed, which is not on the table, but we will move to that in a little while. I mentioned that uh, there was a monument erected to John Hart. Uh, it was July 4th, 1865, uh, in the Old School Baptist Cemetery. On July 4th of 1865, John was reinterred at the Old School Baptist Cemetery in Hopewell Borough, and Deborah remained at the Hunt Burial Grounds on Harborton Woodsville Road. And she is there to this day. John remains in this day at Old School Baptist Cemetery. Uh, Governor Parker of New Jersey did a speech at the Dedication of the monument, and we have that copy here. So above the fireplace, uh, we have an image of John Hart. Uh, this was done by John Hart IV, who was a Philadelphia artist and uh, a descendant, of course. But we do not have any original images so this, again, is an imagined vision of what John Hart may have looked like. And here we have John Hart IV, the artist, two of his sons. John Hart, the artist, died in 1904. And in addition to being an artist, he was an accountant for a Philadelphia department store. And I received that information from one of the descendants of the signers who sent me a clipping of John Hart IV's obituary. We also have other photographs here, uh, some of the descendants at the John Hart Monument in Hopewell. And the monument indicates that Hart died in 1780, which of course is incorrect because the official date of John Hart's death was 1779. This is a photograph of the artist here and his sister at the monument. And these are two additional photographs of the monument in Old School Baptist Cemetery. Uh, they do not have dates on them. And unfortunately, we have no accession record that would give us a sense. Cleon Hammond continued to be annoyed by the fact that John Hart's image had been so imagined over the years. In 1976, he commissioned a composite portrait of what he thought John Hart might look like. And the artist who did this was Charles Howard Waterhouse. As I said earlier, Cleon Hammond was a colonel in the Marines, 
and Waterhouse was also a Marine and served as an artist for the Marine Corps. According to all of the research that Cleon had done, this is what John Hart might have looked like. Dark hair, dark complexion, and Hammond served as the president of the Hopewell Museum for some time. I have noticed in gathering papers from the museum that Hammond was a very active president, and you have fulsome minutes and a lot of participation from board members. So I think Hammond brought his talents from organization to the museum as well. Hammond also did a lengthy article, uh, and it was published in New Jersey History, which was the Proceedings of the New Jersey Historical Society. Uh, their autumn 1974 issue had a lengthy article on all of the research Hammond had done trying to sort out the stories that had taken place from shortly after Hart died through the 20th century, uh, the various people who imagined that they had an image of John Hart, that there was a silhouette done by John Hart, and of course, it was all debunked, but it's very interesting reading. And we finally come to the image of Hart's home. Uh, this watercolor of the home was produced by Gray's Watercolors. They were a firm that used, as they said in their brochures, uh, Currier and Ives techniques by making a lithographic plate and then having college students color it in. Uh, in 1980, the museum bought five of the watercolors, including the image of the Hart homestead. Uh, the plaque for the homestead, and we're getting a little bit out of sequence here, uh, was dedicated in June of 1959 by the Sons of the Revolution, and we have an image of the left hand or western part of the home that they suspect may have been part of the home when Hart and his family lived there. He and Deborah raised 13 children in that house. The question is, did anything survive from Hart's time? In 1984, a Hopewell Cultural Resource Survey was conducted, and we have a three-page summary of the architectural elements of the home and the buildings. There is some suspicion that there may have been elements that were reused from the time that Hart and Deborah lived there. Unfortunately, uh, no archeological work has been done. I checked with our two resident archeologists and they told me there was nothing that they knew of. So today, I believe that there are two barns and when Hammond purchased it, there were barns, the home and seven acres. And we have additional proof that Hart certainly was able to write. We have his signature on a vellum deed, uh, John Hart, Esquire, his wife, Deborah, and Daniel Hart. And the deed was to John, Peter, and Isaac Wyckoff, W-I-K-O-F-F, -F, of Philadelphia. The deed is dated July 4th, 1766 and it was for two parcels of land adjoining the Stony Brook. And it, it was been framed and has been at the Hopewell Museum, but to our knowledge, it was never hung. 
And then we have a genealogical tree of John Hart. Ah. I did not examine the back of it to see when it might have been done, but it hangs on the wall. And so the mysteries remain, and we hope that perhaps in the future someone will do additional research and we can find out the answers to some of the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.